Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Ayyul Ahbab Ending our The last uh, lesson In our Study of this very beneficial reminder From our Shaykh Shaykh Ibrahim uh, Ar-Rahayli Hafidhullahu Ta'ala We left off In the last portion of the treaties and the sheikh I, I want to back up just for a quick uh, revision the sheikh had mentioned the hadith where the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said if tarakat al-yahud alayhi ta wa sab'in firqa wa if tarakat al-nasara alayhi ta wa sab'in firqa wa sa taftariku hadhi umma ala thalatha wa sab'in firqa kullaha fin nar illa wahida kulna man hiya ya rasulullah qala man kana ala mithi ma kana alayhi wa ashabi al-yawm the Prophet والسلام, said the Jews would break into 71 uh, sects and the Christian into 72 sects. And my Ummah would break into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. And they said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, والسلام, those who follow my Sunnah and the Sunnah uh, of my companions this day. Then the Shaykh, after mentioning that hadith, he said, this division entering of desires and contradiction of the text based upon intellect and prejudice towards men, blind partisanship towards particular scholars and methodology are all from the characteristics of the people of innovation, which has become well known over time. So understand that these are the uh, characteristics of the people of innovation. If you want to know if someone is a person of innovation or what are the characteristics that a person like this possesses, is you'll see if they're a person of their desires, meaning that they... Uh, they don't give importance to the text, the Quran and the Sunnah, and the methodology of the Salaf, but instead they follow how they want to believe and how they uh, think Islam should be perceived and, and, and etc. And they contradict the text based upon their intellect. You know, they say, well, you know, today, you know, it's, it's 2013 and almost 2014, you know, we've got to change some things about the Sharia. Or, you know, the Sharia is not up to date now. Or, uh, you know, we've got to look at, take a more modern approach in Dawah. Or we've got to do things like this. Or we should form a group and run around the countries with a priest and a minister and a, uh, a Jewish rabbi and make Dawah this way and propagate Islam in this ma manner. This is the new m methodology. We should come closer to the other faiths and, and, and establish a love in a type of, uh, of, of coming together to spread Islam. Well, these are ways which contradict uh, the methodology of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam and the methodology of the Anbiya before him Alayhim after Salatu Wasalam. So then the Sheikh said, Half of Allah Ta'ala, the Ummah over the last few years has become afflicted by that chronic ailment, even some of those who associate themselves with the Sunnah. Therefore, they share in the fitna, the trial and the problems of the people of innovation and desires under the name of Ahlul Sunnah. Then you will find they base their love and their pact upon following so and so and supporting him even if he makes a mistake contradicting the text, the Quran and the Sunnah, and the creed of the Salaf. Their hatred and enmity is for everyone who does not enter into the fitna blindly, meaning you have to take a position, and you have to take their position. They will reject the text or reinterpret it if it goes against the statement of their sheikh. And it is considered a strong proof, and voices are raised until there is silence out of extreme fear. Meaning the people are afraid to speak out against this. This munkar, that if you don't take a position and you're with us, you're against us. So what will people do? People will be silent. All of us, it's afflicted many of us over the years, where we were silent about many things that we knew were wrong, but maybe we didn't have the knowledge to deal with it, or we were just fearful of being declared an innovator and away from the group. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and bless us to be from Ahlul Sunnah, the Salafiyun. Ahlul Tamasik bi kitabi Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen.
So the sheikh said they will reject the text and reinterpret it if it goes against the statement of their sheikh and it is considered a strong proof and voices are raised until there is silence out of extreme fear. Many books are written as a proof in support of his statement to the point a, a man will be disparaged for an issue he resolved and another is praised due to his following desires. Honorable nicknames are given to the ignorant and young Rather, even those who are rash, foolish, without experience in research and reporting to obtain their acceptance, which used to only be given to the firmly established imams of the religion during the time of the Salaf. So meaning that there are nicknames given to people who aren't even deserving of this. He's an, uh, people say, Alama so-and-so, Imam so-and-so, uh, Sheikh so-and-so. And he may not be an ignorant student of knowledge. He may not even be a student of knowledge but it's only because of his position. So this is a very serious thing. These kind of names and nicknames were only, were only given to the, the Salaf, only gave them to people who were imams of the religion. These people were known for their humbleness, for their uh, ibadah, their worship, and for their taqwa, and their knowledge, their ilm. The major scholars whose hair has grayed in the pursuit of knowledge and practice are debased and ridiculed as being without understanding sometimes and having a lack of jealousy for the sunnah at other times or accused of tamir, being careless or wasteful in the principles of the religion. And all this is only due to the fact they did not pursue the fitna and because they reprimanded the person of fitna. So if they corrected a person who fell into error, sometimes the people will be loud and scream against them and say, oh, they're to me, they're uh, wasting the principles of the religion. They are compromising the religion or they don't know the religion or they don't understand the in the issues or they don't understand fiqhawaka or whatever the situation is, but they will attack the major scholars even because they have reprimanded them. One of the strangest things pertaining to this is that a book was praised during the time the people were pleased with the writer and it is said there's nothing written like this then it is studied during the nights of the blessed month of ramadan then that praise turns to disparagement during the time of anger with the writer so much so until it is said regarding the same book that no one read this book except that they understood that the writer was mumayya meaning one who compromises the religious principles. So after the book was being taught yesterday, it is warned against today. It could be deduced that this is due to the differences between people and their various viewpoints regarding the book. However, it is hard to believe that the one who made the judgment and the second ju made the first judgment and the second judgment regarding the book is the same man. And the Sheikh ended uh, with that. So I want to just contextualize this statement. The Sheikh here is talking about, uh, may Allah preserve, preserve him, about a situation, and I believe this is in reference to his book, because we heard the many complaints, and by the permission and grace of Allah, I was able to attend the beginning to the end of his book, which is was his PhD thesis called Mokif Ahl Sunnah Min Ahl Bida Wal Ahwa. You know, the position of Ahl Sunnah with regards to the people of desires and innovation. And this is the Sheikh's, was his PhD thesis, and it is a phenomenal piece of research which deals with all the issues of, for example, uh, who is Ahl Sunnah, you know, and who is an innovator. And then how you deal with innovators. It, the per, you know, is it permissible to pray behind them? Is it per permissible to eat their vabiha? Is it permissible to go to their janazah? Is it permissible to make hajr from them? Is it permissible to make takfir of them? All of those issues were detailed. The sheikh did research on this. He spent, you know, that's his PhD thesis. We studied this book over 56 lessons and it took us two years to complete it by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the time, there were many people, uh, there, there was praise for the book initially. Then some, even Mashaikh, and some, and m many students of knowledge, uh, began to criticize the book and say the Sheikh was Mumayyah, 
or say the sheikh was, or the book had to me in it, or what have you, meaning that the book uh, compromised the principles of Ahlul Sunnati with Jama'ah, and that the sheikh was a compromiser of the principles. And I recall, and again, these are recorded uh, lex- lessons. In the last uh, couple of lessons, the sheikh said, you know, he invited that anyone please take a week or what have you in any criticisms any complaints, any issues that you find in the book, bring it. Bring it the next lesson and we'll discuss it. And no one brought anything and up to that date, no one had anything with regards to criticizing the sheikh. Instead, there was these vague claims, but no one ever brought a detail and said on page such and such, you did this. Or there was a mistake here. No one brought anything to him. But instead, the secret whisperings. May Allah forgive us and the whisperers, Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. And the Shaykh mentioned that even from a same individual who at one time was praising the book, and then another time the same person was criticizing the Shaykh in the book. And this shows, Ayyul Ahbab, that we have to be just, and that Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah is just. And this is a pillar which distinguishes Ahlul Sunnah from Ahlul Bid'ah. Ahlul Bid'ah is unjust. They're unjust with their uh, education, uh, ad- adjudication because they don't adjudicate by the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They ad- adjudicate by their desires. They make their judgments based upon their desires, based upon their sheikh, based upon their methodology, based upon their group or their sect makes their judgments based on the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Salaf, the pious predecessors of this Ummah. And Ahl Sunnah is just, even with Ahl Bid'ah. We don't go beyond the bounds. So we don't say, so-and-so is an innovator. I'm going to speak about his mother. I'm going to speak about his race. I'm going to speak about his his, his looks. I'm going to, no. Ahl Sunnah is not like that. Ahl Sunnah deals with the issue. And as people are well aware of, I spoke about Imran Hussein. I try to be just. I try to say, Imran Hussein said this on his tape, and this is why it's a mistake. But I don't say, Imran Hussein, he's from such and such race. He's from South Africa. I don't like this country. And he's not this. And his color is this. No, that's not just. Justice is dealing with the issues based on Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and not being hypocritical. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins and may Allah bless us with ikhlas, with thabat and bless us to benefit from knowledge and be a source of benefit to others. And in conclusion, in the translation, and may Allah forgive me for any shortcomings in translation, I ended my treaty, the translation of the Shaykh's treaties, Hafizullah Ta'ala, by saying, Thus ends the translation of this humble but very beneficial short lecture of our Shaykh Ibrahim Ar Rahaili, and may Allah bless him to continue calling to the Sunnah and teaching the principles of the religion and forgive us and him for any shortcomings we might have. I hope that this can be a tool for understanding important aspects about Islam and the Sunnah and a source of guidance, and may Allah accept this as a good deed on the Day of Judgment and reward all of the scholars and those upon the Sunnah, and may peace and blessings be upon the final Prophet and Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad Ibn Abdullah, Salawatu Rabbi, Wasallamu Alaihi. Uh, and I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. اللهم إني أعوذ بك أن أشرك بك وأنا على مستغفرك اللي من علمه وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم